In this tutorial, I wanted to demonstrate how to create your own collision for Unity and how to bring it into Unity and how to get it to line up with the art ge geometry in Unity. And in this demonstration, I'm going to be um, creating basically a little simple uh, racetrack that we're going to use our little car tutorial here. I'm going to delete some of these things and basically we're going to create a little track for him and bring in our own collision for the track because it's a unique shape. So we're using Maya here and basically I went into display grid options and I set my grid to 100 units. Grid lines every 8 units, one subdivision and basically that allows me to see the grid that I'm seeing. So I'm going to close those settings. Also, Windows Setting Preferences. Under Settings here, I've left, uh, I want to switch this to 30 frames per second on the animation, and I've left the um, size units at centimeters. Okay, so basically to get started here, I'm going to go Create Polygon Plane. I'm going to go over here in the inputs where the polyplane is. I'm going to set the width of it to 16. I'll set the height of it to 80. And for right now, we will do one subdivision height and width. I'm going to go under Color. Make sure that you're in the Polygons menu here. I'm going to go under Color, Apply Color, Settings right here. And basically, I just select this default um, crazy bright magenta. So there we have it. I'm going to go edit, delete by type history, modify, freeze transformations, modify, center pivot. Now I've made myself little shortcuts here for history, freezing transforms, and center pivot. So sometimes you'll see me hit those, and that's actually what I'm doing here is deleting the history freezing the transforms and centering the pivot. So this is like my little straightaway on the track. I'm going to hit control D and move one over. We'll type in translation of 40 in the X. I'm going to go mesh or edit mesh, I'm sorry, add divisions and options box. And over here I'm going to have divisions in U1, divisions in V4 and of course it's linear. I'm going to hit apply and apply twice. I'm going to go in and delete the history, freeze the transforms and center the pivot again. Now we want to go into animation menu, create deformers, nonlinear, bend. I'm just going to hit apply and we're going to want to go hit the E key on the keyboard and rotate this in X and type it in over here, negative 90. We typed it in over there to be accurate. That way our bend is parallel with our geometry. I'm going to select the inputs over here, a little bend, and then curvature. I'm going to basically, you can put in a number if you want, negative 1. What I do is I select the curvature here so it's highlighted like this. Hover out here in the viewport in the empty space, hold down middle mouse button, and drag left and right. And so I get these neat little automated so it's looking like negative 1.58 is good on curvature right there so I'm going to select the piece itself and I'm going to delete the history freeze transfer and center pivot and so I have a little curve now I'm going to hit control D I'm going to kind of shift this to the side here and I'm actually going to go down, hold down right mouse button, my markup menu comes up, and I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to just left mouse button and shift select all the faces there, and hit delete. I'm going to delete the history, freeze transform, center the pivot. So now we have the little pieces that we need to build our track. So basically I'm just going to kind of go in here and just move the track around. Not a big deal, pieces. Um, I'm going to hit control D and actually duplicate some of these pieces. I want accurate rotations and all that so I'm going to type in 90 there and then I'm not snapping to the grid or anything and we could but um, 
I'm just kind of eyeballing it or whatever. The only thing I'm not eyeballing are the rotations, just to make sure that like all the track pieces line up. Um, control D. I keep duplicating these pieces, and I'm just um, kind of making and move these out of the way. Control D again. Let's take a 90 for that piece. And we're just kind of making an arbitrary track here. It doesn't have to be 100%. Close enough. Um, close enough to show that we have a, a sort of uh, semi-detailed shape here. You know, to build the collision off of. So we'll type negative 90. I'm typing a lot of the values so that we just get like 100% accurate rotations. I'm not really uh, bothered so much by the. I'm going to rotate a piece for the straight. Negative 90 as well. I'm going to kind of line it up. Bring another piece over here. Oh, we only want to rotate on one axis here. So that one is negative 180. And actually, what we're going to do here is just end it here. Oop. Okay. So, really, we want to go back to our polygon menu. We want to go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool right here, click it, and then click on one of the edges here on this long straightaway right here, and basically it's going to insert our edge loop there. I'm going to go to Face Mode by holding down the right mouse button, select it, delete it, and then I'm going to go over here and do the same on this piece. We're going to go Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop, put that right there. Right mouse button, held down, face mode, delete. And I'm pretty happy with what we have, so I'm just going to kind of delete those. We don't need them. I'm going to hold down left mouse button, draw a marquee, shift select everything. I'm going to go mesh combine. Now it's all one mesh. I'm going to go edit, delete by type, history, modify, freeze transformations, modify center pivot. I'm going to hold down the X button on the keyboard and left mouse button. You'll notice that the whole thing is snapping to the grid. So I'm going to snap it right there to the center. So basically that's our track centered. Now the next thing we want to do is sew up these funky non-sewn up edges here, weld them together. So we're going to hold down right mouse button, go into vertex mode, and we're going to just shift select everything. So all our vertices, if I hit the 4 key on the keyboard, can kind of see it better, wireframe mode, and you can see our little unsewn polygons. So we're going to go Edit Mesh, we're going to go Merge, Options, we're going to try 0 .01, but I didn't think that was going to work because they're totally too far apart. I'm going to try that. Let's just try 1. And 1 seemed to be what's sewn up all of our edges. It's all one piece. And hit the 5 key on the keyboard to go back into shaded mode. It's all one piece now. And we're good to go. And it's centered in the world. So I'm going to go File, Save Scene As. I'm going to navigate up to where my Unity project is, Assets. And I've created a folder called Models in there. I'm going to go Binary Mode. And I'm going to call it Track 1. I'm going to call it Artwork. So I know that this is the art geometry. Now, we're going to make collision, which is really simple. We're just going to take exactly what we have here. I'm going to hold down right mouse button and go into edge mode. I'm going to shift select. I'm going to hit the four key on the keyboard first so we can go into wireframe and see what we're doing. Hold down. I'm going to select that first edge. Hold down shift. Select that second edge. With the two edges selected, I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard, right mouse button, edge loop utilities, and I'm going to go to edge loop. And I'm going to hit the 5 key back on the keyboard again, and we see that we've selected our outer edges. And from there, I'm going to go Edit Mesh and Extrude. And I'm going to grab the little 
blue icon, and we're just going to pull some walls up. When I'm done, I'm going to hit the W key, and there we have it. We have some walls. We lost some of our vertex coloring. Not a big deal. You could go back into color, apply color, and just hit apply again, whatever color you want it to be. I chose the magenta because it's easier to see what's going on. Now we want to make sure that these walls, the normals, are facing in so we collide against them and not backwards. So we're going to go under shading and we're going to make sure that back face culling is turned on. And we can see that we see the walls from the inside, but they're see through from the outside, which is basically the normals are pointing in and up, which is good. You don't want your normals pointing down and you don't want them pointing outside of the walls. Um, basically what I just clicked there was under display. I had a little shortcut here I clicked. It was under display, polygons, and then face normals. Basically it shows you those normals. Um, we can go back under there and there's normal size and we can make that like point 0.1 under display, polygons, and then normal size right there. We make it kind of smaller, and you can see that the normals are pointing in, not out. And they're not pointing down, they're pointing up. Basically, the collision in Unity is going to check against these little things, these little normal vectors pointing out. And it wants to be able to touch those. If they were pointing out, which I can reverse the normals here, you can see our problem now. They're facing down, which the car will never be underneath the track, and they're pointing out. So our car, if this was placed into Unity with these normals backwards like this, would actually fall out of the world. It would just drop. It wouldn't, um... Oop. Basically, the way that I did that was that's a shortcut there. I'm clicking right here for the reverse normals, and it's right here under the menu, Normals, Reverse. So basically we can turn off that display. This is our collision, so we don't want to save over our track one artwork file. So we're going to go uh, into where our models are, track one artwork, except we're going to call this one collision. And we want to name it, instead of polysurface one, we want to also name it here. Okay. Hit <clears throat> the W key, delete history. Freeze transform, center the pivot. Now in the collision, it centered the pivot, but it centered it on the geometry, and it's not centered to the 0, 0, 0, 0 of the world. And the way that I'm going to place it in Unity, we need the collision's pivot point to be zeroed out at the 0 of the world. So basically to do that, we're going to hit the Insert key, and you'll see that our little um, transform tool changes when you hit the Insert key. It means you can move the pivot around. So we're going to hold down X on the keyboard, and with the left mouse button, we're just going to drag it into the there. Hit W key on the keyboard, and it basically goes back to normal transform. Now we're going to resave this again, and we have our artwork scene, and we have our collision scene. So we'll minimize this. We're going to go over into Unity, and in our models folder now, we see we have track one artwork, track one collision, scale factor of one for both, which is fine. Make sure generate colliders is turned off on these when they're brought in. We don't need to generate colliders because we're going to use our own collider. So basically we'll grab this artwork track and we'll left mouse drag button it over. And there we go. I had to actually, the car was at the 000 in the world and I actually had to kind of move it over to sit on the track. Not a big deal. So I click on the track here. I see all it has is a material and a mesh renderer. I'm just going to go in here and just any texture you have in the scene. It doesn't matter. It looks like horrible garbage. But anything you have, just to kind of put something on it to see the texture is fine. Okay, so now we have our artwork in there. That would be like your beautiful art world. Now we want to put our collision. If I hit play, he is just going to fall right through that artwork. because there is no collision on it. So we're going to go game object, create empty. We're going to go to this little gear right here and we're just going to reset the position to zero out all of the numbers in there. And what I'll do, so call this one track one 
collision. So we know that's the collision for our track one. There's our track one artwork. We're going to go component, physics, and then mesh collider. It has the mesh collider on the collision now. Let me delete this. Sorry, that's redundant left over. All right. And under mesh, it says it doesn't have one for the collider. So we're going to click this little circle here. We're going to look through our stuff, and we should see our track one collision. Double click it. It's applied it. You can see it now. It's invisible. You see our artwork. You see our track one collision. There it is. Um, but it's snapped, and it's matched up, and it's lined up perfectly with our, <clears throat> our artwork. So basically now at this point, now that we have the mesh collider on there and we have our artwork, when I hit play now, our little guy is not going to fall through the world. He's actually going to sit on that collision. We can actually hide the artwork and he'll drive around on invisible collision. But it's there. It keeps him from falling out of the world. But it kind of shows you the, you know, the difference between your artwork and your collision. They're kind of kind of independent of each other. They're kind of two separate entities, but they are very much dependent on each other because you know, your collision is going to basically determine, you know, see, where this little guy can drive. It's going to determine everything. Um, sometimes you're going to see a lot of games in the past, maybe in the old days, where like a character or wheels or guns or something kind of would go through your artwork and you'd be like what and it was basically the collision really not matching a hundred percent to the art because we can go in here and because um, right now our collision and our artwork geometry are the same poly count but you always really want your collision to be sort of a lower poly count than your artwork. So you have to think about spots that you could go in and kind of remove edges and things and then kind of still keep generally that really close shape to your artwork. So your collision's going to end up being more of like a low poly. You can go up here and grab some of these verts up top and uh, you know merge them and just go around and do general poly reduction and all that um, like there's an edge loop right there and basically you'll start lower in the poly count on this collision bring it back into unity and your artworks gonna have its poly count which will be quite a bit higher than your collision poly count for the ex example in our tutorial um, Generally, they're the same poly count here, but that's just for teaching sake. So basically, that's how you'd create an import in collision into Unity uh, to put on top of your art and separate your collision and your artwork so that you can use a custom collider, um, but you could also optimize it down still and still allow for a lot more different collision activity than just a, you know your primitive colliders, which would be really difficult to use. And um, you know this method applies all throughout. So I hope this helped you guys.